speak about all things software architecture. I'm your host, Tengiz. I'm a software architect who has an experience in application, solution, and enterprise architecture fields, besides software development, of course. I'm also a book author. You can buy my book, Effective Software Development for Enterprise, on Amazon and other marketplaces. Today, we will speak about a topic of software architecture in agile processes. And uh, another way to look at this topic would be to ask a question whether the architecture is dead in agile processes. Why would I pose these questions, you would ask? And that is because agile and architecture are suggesting some things that contradict to each other and require clarification. In a lot of cases, if you don't clarify these matters, what happens is people see them uh, as uh, mutually exclusive disciplines and they end up practicing one and not following the other, which actually diminishes the value from the software development and architecture exercises. So where is the clash exactly? Um, Agile is suggesting that we need to adapt to a change and be ready for the change, be ready for any conditions that can happen while we are implementing the project. That is the core principle of Agile, to be adaptive to changes. And it happens through iterations. Uh, and the, on the other hand, architecture is a discipline where you think about things up front and you design your solutions and large scale designs and high level visions ahead of time before the development starts. So too many, these um, distinction of architecture might be a contradictory to Agile suggestions, which I specified earlier, because Agile, in a way, uh, tries to build things in iterations in small pieces, while architecture as a discipline it might be sounding uh, as a suggestion to do things up front, just like we used to do during the waterfall times. So where is the caveat, the two disciplines? definitely need to coexist and we need to learn how to do that. Um, otherwise, as I said earlier, we will diminish the values returned from the software development exercises. So let's see exactly how they can coexist. Um, and before we do that, um, let's clarify a couple of things. Uh, first, let's clarify the um, downsides when we don't practice either agile or software architecture, which brings the need for them to coexist. If you don't practice Agile, you go back to the waterfall times. This doesn't require much clarification, of course, um, because we all know how Agile is better than the waterfall. Again, for that same core principle itself, to be adaptive to changes, to be ready to make the changes as you learn more by uh, gathering the feedback iteratively through your uh, Agile iterations or sprints. Now let's clarify what happens if we don't pay attention to architecture. We might end up creating structures which don't make much sense from the structural cohesiveness and integrity standpoint. And in other words, you will build uh, random structures that are hard to explain to others. They don't follow certain patterns. And as you know, patterns are just an established language that everybody understands. So it's crucial to follow the architecture as an exercise and always think about your structures ahead of time. It is very important. If you don't do that, as I said, you just end up building something which is hard to explain to others, which is hard to maintain, hard to manage, how hard to uh, run in the production environment and so on. So these downsides clarify that we should practice both software architecture and agile so there is definitely a need for them to coexist and this is what i want to touch next how to let these two exercises be run in parallel together and in combination to deliver the most value out of the software engineering so before we start let me clarify that my suggestions will apply to the software architecture field more rather than the Agile, because as such, Agile is a process, it needs to be practiced, there is no question about that. Of course, there are some sorts of school who prefer not to practice Agile, but that is outside of the scope for this conversation. 
In this dialogue, I will assume that you want to practice Agile and you want to understand how to combine that exercise with the software architecture principles. Um, and from that standpoint, here are the steps that I would suggest. First of all, think about iterations and think about the architecture as a result of those iterations. Just like you think about the product that evolves through those iterations and Scrum Sprints, uh, similarly, the architecture can also evolve. And as it evolves, what's important is to understand where it's going. So I think there are two aspects to this uh, iterative evolution of the architecture. First is to plan the vision ahead of time and understand what is this North Star architecture you're going toward. And then secondly, understand how your backlog is going to allow you to evolve your architecture to achieve that North Star vision. After you understand these principles, then you need to think what is the path that the architecture needs to go through. This is a technical path. And as you look at your product backlog, it's not technical at all. Uh, although it could be, but it would be an anti-pattern, but typically product backlogs are not technical, they are functional. And where does the architecture fit in there? How do you evolve architecture while you implement the product backlog? And the answer would be to look at the architecture as an enabler to the functional requirements rather than something that you need to build in isolation and in separation. And in other words, as you build your product from the product backlog by taking the highest priority items in each iteration, think about technical capabilities that you're building to support those functional requirements that the software needs to fulfill. And that technical component set that you're implementing through the iteration is the evolution path of the architecture. That is something that you cannot plan exactly, but having the North Star in mind and having some flexibility points in mind will help you succeed in this path. And the second principle is to think about it top down rather than bottom up. And this is very important because naturally, as you go through the iterations, and if you don't think about the North Star vision, and you don't think about the future state architecture, you might be thinking about these little components you are building throughout the iterations. And at the end, you again have these random structures that I so much opposed earlier. And instead, what you need to think is that North Star architecture consists of components and these components need to be thought through from that overall architecture vision standpoint. In other words, how do they fit together? What makes sense to build now in this iteration uh, so that it would nicely fit in that final state architecture vision? And as you start to think about each component, you will be more successful because you have this large scale vision in your head. And in Agile, that is of course a challenging exercise because again, Agile is going iteration by iteration, but the architecture needs to go from vision to iterations rather than from iterations to vision. And then the next step would be uh, to architect in each iteration only what you need rather than architecting something that you don't really need for your functional requirements. This again goes back to the earlier suggestion of building the enabler of every functional requirement in each sprint and that is literally what I'm repeating now. And then of course remember that the architecture needs to be implemented properly. And there are a couple of things that you need to keep in mind to, to succeed in this direction as well. First, there is a development team that you as an architect needs, needs to guide throughout the implementation process. It doesn't work like you dropping an architecture on them as a requirement and expect them to fulfill it the way you had in mind you might end up building some software that does not fulfill exactly the architecture you had envisioned earlier. Instead, you need to be closer to engineering teams down to the earth, not like an astronaut, but 
more like a um, their co-traveler who explains to them in each iteration how the architecture is fulfilled and how it's evolving and also don't forget to explain to the engineering team what the final this so-called north star architecture looks like because that's where you all are headed together you and the engineering team and do these exercises repetitively throughout each iteration. Don't forget about this. These are very important. When I am an architect and I work with a team, I ensure that in each iteration, I clarify the technical intentions that the architecture is fulfilling in these iterations. And sometimes I also explain what's coming in the future. And by all means, I explain the final vision of the architecture toward which we are marching. And um, one last item on this topic is um, to not hesitate to refactor the architecture, just like engineers refactor the software that they build. And this is a good exercise to do, just like flossing when we brush the teeth. Similarly, when you build out the architecture vision, you build out your diagrams and you are marching towards the North Star architecture as you learn things on your path you need to ensure that you refactor those diagrams. Sometimes you learn things which just put things upside down and that is all right. You need to just rebuild your vision and now decide how this path you are on is driving towards that direction. Adopting to that kind of change might be challenging and it might seem that now this is ruining everything I said earlier, but it's really not. As soon as you reach this integrity of the final vision and you understand how your current path is going to drive you towards that and you again look at your future backlog as a functional requirements and you start thinking about the enabling technical points to those functional requirements you are again back to the same points as i described earlier so the same techniques will apply again now next i want to cover things that you need to avoid while following these practices that I described earlier. Uh, first caveat that comes with my uh, suggestions is that you might end up creating something very generalized. Uh, as you remember, I told you that you need to build up architecture from iteration to iteration. And sometimes what I have seen is architects taking this suggestion to the extreme level and building out something that is so easy to adapt to the changes that is so flexible that it stops to make sense. Uh, as you remember, there is this saying which says, make it simple, but not simpler, right? So the simplicity has some value to this certain point. After that, it starts bringing the di diminishing results and you need to avoid that side effect of simplification. So do not simplify things so much that you build something very extremely generalized. Instead, build something specific because you are building a product and not a framework. And this distinction between a product and the framework is very important to understand how to design your models. Sometimes you do build a framework. And for those of you who are building a framework, maybe you need to build something very generic, some generic model, some so-called adaptive models, things that basically you build in little pieces and you, then you connect them together and it doesn't make sense together, but it makes sense in little isolated pieces. So maybe you call them modules or components. Also, that approach is very relevant to the framework development. But as soon as we speak about the productized or the business or the enterprise software development, that approach might not be so appropriate. So avoid this caveat. Do not generalize the architecture, make it specific. Uh, specific architectures are easier to explain to others, are easier to maintain, are easier to extend because they fulfill this business specific need, your business distinct needs that you have, rather than uh, solving some problems which you cannot even explain. That is not really necessary for the architecture because then you will diminish the value out of it. And with that, I want to wrap up the topic. Thank you for listening. If you liked it, please click thumbs up button and subscribe so that you receive notifications as I post future videos.
Also, if you have some questions, please leave a comment below and I will make sure to answer those. Also, feel free to suggest new topics and I will discuss them in my future videos, perhaps. Uh, check out my blog online, which is linked in the description of this video. And check out my book too. This is for sale on Amazon. It's again called Effective Software Development for Enterprise. It is primarily based on domain-driven design, software architecture, extreme programming, and other practices which are very important. The book touches both the process as well as the implementation details. It is good for both technical and non-technical audiences. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you will enjoy my book. Stay safe and talk to you next time.